Camp counselors of Reddit, what is the most bleep thing you've seen happen at camp? Story 1. I was a camp counselor a few years ago at a camp for foster kids. One week a counselor caught a camper, M15, in bed with another camper, F14. The room they were in was tiny, and the four other girls in the bunks were awake and cheering them on. They were loud enough to wake the counselor, who pulled the male camper out of bed. The guy had a Ziploc bag around his D, held in place by a rubber band. I was both impressed at their dedication to trying to have safe S, and appalled at how terribly they went about it. Story 2 My Time to Shine I was witness to one of the most hardcore and insane things that has ever happened at a Christian camp. In the summer of 2001 I was a counselor-slash-work crew member at a Christian camp in northern CA. I was there for a month, and we had four different groups that showed up for one week each. This first three groups were completely normal and without incident. The last week we had a group of about 300, at risk, kids that were from underprivileged areas up and down the Pacific coast from San Diego to Seattle. These were mostly kids that were growing up on some mean streets and rarely got out into nature, so it was awesome for them to be out in nature and getting the full camper experience. The first day went fine and it was mostly just everyone settling in. After the second day, however, things started getting a little bit tense between some of the different groups of kids from different areas. On the third day, we had a hoedown with all the campers on the basketball court as a dance floor. This is where tensions came to a head, and where shit got intense very fast. Unknown to our ultimately naive camp leaders, there were multiple Crip and Blood gang members from different cities throughout the groups of campers. The hoedown ended up becoming a battleground. I'll never forget watching a six-plus teenager leap off of the top of some bleachers like Roddy Piper off a turnbuckle and smash an unsuspecting camper's face in. It erupted into a full-blown brawl that lasted the better part of an hour. I honestly consider it a miracle that nobody was killed. I have seen a few street fights in my day, but this one made me never want to see another one. As a result, a few campers went to the hospital, a few got arrested, and the rest went back to their bunks. Later that evening, each counselor was assigned a bunkhouse to bring a tray of brownies and pitcher of juice to. We did this on day three for all the camp groups. Basically we were supposed to befriend them with juice and brownies and tell them how great our Christian organization is and how Jesus has positively affected us. Upon entering the bunkhouse I see a timid white counselor with his head in his hands in an almost fetal position sitting on the edge of a bunk. As I look around... I notice all of the campers are rummaging around in their bags and grabbing their gang colors and bandanas. It wasn't really picking up on what was happening until I heard the unmistakable sound of a slide being pulled back on handgun. As I turn around I see two kids tucking in pistols into their waistbands. These kids were suiting up for a full-blown gang war in the middle of a Chrysotin camp. I don't remember what I said exactly, but I must have said something because their group leader guy looked up from his hands with watery eyes and just mouthed. I don't know what to do. I set down the pitcher of juice and plate of brownies on the ground and booked it to the main building in the camp. I told the camp leaders what was going down, and they called 911 immediately. Luckily the cops got there relatively fast given it was fairly close to a small town. They ended up arresting over a dozen campers and even a few of their group's counselors. To this day I don't know what their counselors were arrested for. They cancelled the rest of the camp and sent all the kids home three days early. That was the last summer camp I ever was a counselor at. Story 3 My favorite on was a 13-year-old boy at camp out. Both his hands were in his sleeping bag and he was clearly doing the thing. His counselor called a hand check, where you have to display both hands in the air. He only raised on hand. The counselor asked for both hands and he replied, Give me four minutes. Story 4 I worked as a junior counselor at a summer camp quite some years back that had kids aged 6 to 15. One camper, let's call him Billy, he was 10, was really homesick. Billy was very shy and awkward, and you could tell something wasn't 100% right with him. Lights out was at 8 p.m but they could use a lantern to read slash tell ghost stories slash other shit as long as they didn't disturb their bunkmates. Now, a few things happened while Billy was at camp. First thing, 
Billy was being made fun of by this other camper. We'll call him Jake. Jake was the typical. My dad can beat up your dad. Brat. One night, Jake comes to the counselor cabin, crying. He said he woke up and someone was peeing on him, and peeing in his mouth. He didn't know who, though, because he had piss in his eye and couldn't see. After asking around, nobody saw anything, so we documented it, reported it to the parent, and the mom came to get him. One down. Next incident was a few nights later. Another kid, we'll call him Chad, stole Billy's dinner and ripped up one of his Pokemon cards. Not sure if it was Pokemon, but it was a game card of some kind. That night, we hear yells coming from Billy's cabin. We run over and see Chad with a giant cut on his head and a broken vase. Apparently the vase had fallen off the shelf while Chad was sleeping and hit him. Billy had a shit-eating grin the entire time. Chad needed eight stitches and apparently had some skull fractures. Not sure how accurate the skull fracture part was. Other counselors talked. Two down. The last and final thing that happened was about a week after the vase incident. Another kid, we'll call him Derek, was having a rough time at camp. He was also homesick and missed his parents. I figured Derek and Billy would get along great. I was wrong. Long story short, Billy was found in one of the closets, shoving a broomstick handle into Derek's but while Derek cried and touched Billy's D. They had their parents called and they were both kicked out of camp. I come to find out, 15 years later, that Billy's father was manipulating and sexually abusing him almost every night, and that's just how he thought you made friends. To this day, I know the tale of Billy lives on as the craziest thing that's ever happened at that camp. Story 5 This actually happened earlier today. I work at a summer day camp at a local park with kids in kindergarten age group. Interesting slash gross things happen almost every day with kids at that age. But today's events took the cake. Basically this six-year-old boy found a dead bird in the grass and decided it would be fun to pick it up and smear the blood and guts all over his hands and arms. After doing that, he started chasing around other campers to try to share his bird entrails on them. I had the pleasure of catching the gore-covered kid, ripping the bird's ravaged carcass out of his hands, and spending half an hour in the bathroom getting him and myself cleaned up. When I asked him why the heck he picked up a dead animal he said that he thought it was something awesome to do. Story 6 One year I was working a regular camp and had a lead counselor run over to another counselor and I to say, Look in the first stall of the boys' bathroom. We left our kids with our age group's female counselors and ran. By the time we made it a crowd of counselors had formed around the toilet. Contained inside was by far the mightiest, largest turd I have ever seen in my life. Easily a diameter of three inches and long enough to be far down into the toilet, while also free willying out of the surface of the water. No campers were told about this. A few days later a camper asked me if we were running to the bathroom the other day because of a giant piece of poop and claimed to be the conjurer of it. I was mortified. Story 7 I was working at a Young Life camp in Colorado probably 12 years ago. I think it was the first day right around dinner time and a girl just up and died. Her heart just stopped. She was sitting talking with her friends and fell over. It was incredibly intense and very sad for a lot of people and tons of people were there to witness it. It's not the most scandalous of camp stories, but it was certainly pretty f up and put a weird vibe on the rest of the week. Story 8 Nobody will ever believe this, my parents never did, for some reason it didn't make national news, but here we go. I went to a summer holiday camp once, not religious or any other organization hosting it, just a cheap way for parents to send their kids off for a couple weeks in summer. Well, on the eight-hour bus trip there I already noticed some kids seemed odd, but didn't think that would be an ongoing theme. I was wrong. It turned out that many institutions housing, kids displaying behavioral problems, to use a nice term, were sending kids there, too. It started out with the older kids, 15, regularly bullying and hurting younger kids. I got to be a victim on day one. Yay. We were housed in little wooden huts with eight or ten kids each. Day two it started to smell very bad. After telling the camp staff and them searching the hut it turned out to be a kid, he will appear again, shitting and pissing in his F suitcase. 
Story 10. There were these two kids, which we nicknamed Puppa Picasso and Gandhi. Both were in my friend's cabin, which was year two campers, so the kids were just out of third grade. So I guess they were around eight or nine years old. Anyway, Puppa Picasso would smear his shit. He'd defecate inside of his trunk and left it there for a day before my friend noticed the smell. He wrote on the walls of the bathrooms with his own feces. It was disgusting. Now Gandhi didn't want to be at summer camp, despite it being a total blast. He would bitch and complain and ask to call home, which he wasn't allowed to do unless it was a rather serious situation. Fine we deal with this sometimes, but what we weren't expecting was for him to go on a hunger strike. That's right, a hunger strike. He just would refuse to eat for several meals. He would break and eat a ton of snacks during our afternoon refreshment period when he thought we wouldn't notice. What made Gandhi really special is that he learned how to vomit on command. To do so he would drink insane amounts of water. Then when we would ask him to do something he didn't want to do, he would just vomit everywhere. It was nasty, but at the same time typing this out is making me giggle. Eventually the two kids got over it I think. Story 11 I work in a building that hosts a camp for people with autism and other mental handicaps. A guy with something was really attached to his counselor, a girl. He really liked her and asked her out almost every hour of the week. She finally said no I have a boyfriend or something along those lines. He got really mad and stripped down, and freaked out. He peed and pooped all over the floor. When other counselors were trying to calm him down he ran over to a fire extinguisher box and smashed his head into the glass. He had big chunks of glass in his face and forehead, bleeding everywhere. We were told as building managers to stay clear of the floor he was on, they would clean it all up. It was odd. Another story. When he left the building we also found a sort off poop shrine. He would poop in the closet and then mold underwear to it. He must have used a whole can of Febreze on the thing a day because we never knew about it, couldn't smell anything. Story 13. In high school I was a counselor at a community outdoor camp where a lot of the kids who attended were there just because their parents needed to put them somewhere. These kids were typically 8 to 12 years old. We would have to take the kids on hikes around the property where we'd see a bunch of uninteresting animals, hang out by a pond or creek, then head back to the main center where some animal expert would bring in a snake or owl to give the children some excitement each day. One week we got these two little dudes who hated everything about the camp from the start but they hated each other more than Samuel Jackson hates snakes on a plane. They were constantly finding creative ways to piss each other off throughout the week. On the last day of camp we had just finished a hike and stopped by a creek where everyone could rest and look for frogs or throw mud into the woods. Behind me I hear one of the two call the other A.B., after which I slowly turned around to see what the other one would do. The accused B had picked up a half cinder block size rock and was bringing over his head so he could smash the back of the accuser's head in with it. Fortunately I was close enough to where I could grab the rock before it came down on the other kid's unsuspecting head. Story 13 Ex-counselor here, our camp has a thing where one night all the people who had been there for three years go out and do crazy thing in the fields by the camp. Needless to say I saw a lot of B. But other than that and smoking weed nothing really big happened. Apparently in years before some of the abandoned cabins were used during that night for rowdy s parties with lots of alcohol involved. This was back in like the 1990s where I guess the upper staff were a lot more lenient. I worked at the camp in 2010 so I guess I missed the really interesting stuff. It was interesting to bring up the topic to my boss who worked at the camp as a counselor at that time and see him get all red-faced and not know what I was talking about. Story 14 I worked at an eight-week sleepaway camp in the northeast and was working in a bunk of seven- and eight-year-olds. As the summer went along we lost a few counselors due to the fact our campers were the devil's spawn and only six or seven years old. So us remaining counselors were spread thin. And one day in the span of ten minutes when we didn't have a counselor in the bunk, I'm walking back and all the kids are running out of the bunk screaming about how one of the campers, M6, put his D in another kid's mouth, M7, this is an all-boys camp too. And when the camper was later asked why he let the other kid put the his D in his mouth the kid's response was, because they dared me too. After long lashings from the director and owners, 
and what I assume was some long talks with the kids' parents that was all swept under the rug and forgotten. 